Problems with monarchy. This video is going to be about how the people took the power back from the king. So the story all begins with why kings are even in power in the first place. Back a long time ago, we're talking probably 8-900 AD, um, kings and queens believed they ruled because God told them that they should be the ruler. It was called divine right. More importantly than the king believing that God told them to rule was that the people that he ruled believed that the king was there because God wanted them to. People were extremely religious and they said, you know what, if you go against the king, you're kind of going against God because God wanted them to be in charge. So for many, many years, kings and queens would use this idea of divine right to keep power. You know, they would do mean things, do bad things, keep people without their rights or freedoms and then say, well, God told me I was king, so you shouldn't question me. So it was sort of a, a way to keep control over people and use religion as a, as a method of, of keeping control over people. Um, a couple of little cartoons here. You can see um, these two kings walking hand in hand. Once you get past the divine right of kings, I'm not much into theology. Uh, kind of funny, theology means the study of religion because kings would oftentimes use religion as the reason they were ruling, but... Um, not follow the religion or not really be that into religion, especially in England. Um, another one here, you see the king here with his son. I'll let, I'll let you in on a little secret, son. If you're really, really careful, absolute power corrupts only a little bit. So kings had absolute power. Part of the reason why was because of divine right. Another way kings would keep control over their people was using social class. The, it was called the feudal system. Um, in, the, in this social class system that was prevalent in the Middle Ages, this is the way it worked. Royalty had all the power, and they would keep power by giving a little bit of power away to a different group of people. In return, those people would be loyal to the king. Those people would give a little bit of power away to another group of people, and they would be loyal to them. And then at the bottom, you have a group of people called the peasants who sort of are you know, at the bottom and oppressed by the, the, the top groups. Let's look at it a little bit more carefully here. I'll show you. So the king is at the top. He has all the power. He gives land and control of peasants to these people called the lords. In return, the lords are loyal to the king, and they provide him with military aid so the king doesn't have to worry about getting you know, attacked or anything like that. The lords, they have a lot of power from the king, and they give food, shelter, and protection to a group of people called the knights who are going to be the ones who are fighting. In return, these knights are loyal to the lords. And then finally... The knights um, give food, shelter, and protection to the biggest group of people, the peasants, and the peasants farm the land, and they pay taxes, and all the taxes filter up to the king. So all the king has to do is give away a little bit of power to the lords, and he stays in control. And the peasants, the biggest group, stays oppressed. They have to farm and not own land and not have any rights. So that's the way it worked in England until um, 1215, this guy named King John, he was kind of a bad king. Um, he disrupted the feudal system a little bit. His policies and ideas, the things he was doing as king, took away lands from the nobles, this lower group of people over here, the, the lords. So he's supposed to give them land as part of the system, but his policies were taking their land away. So they were no longer loyal to King John, and they rebelled against him. This was a big mistake, because the, in order for the system to work, the king has to keep the lords happy, and the lords weren't happy with King John. He had no friends to help him, and he was easily defeated in this rebellion by the lords. The king was then forced to sign something called the Magna Carta that put into writing restrictions on his power, and that's the key thing in this video. We'll talk about what those restrictions looked like. And this video makes fun of leaders not understanding their people. All right, so what does the Magna Carta do? It forces the king to give up some of his power in writing. It showed that the king was bound by laws. No longer could he just do whatever he wanted to, because now this Magna Carta says that there are certain restrictions on what the king can do. This um, Magna Carta really affected the nobles. They're the ones that really only got rights. Um, it allowed them to reverse a king's decision. It did not have a big impact immediately, obviously, for hundreds more years, kings rule and oppress peasants. But as time goes on, more and more restrictions are going to be put on the king by the lords and eventually um, the king will lose all their power, like the king and queen of England today have virtually no power at all. A couple of little cartoons here. The king, his wife looking at him with this mean, angry look. I didn't know the Magna Carta had small print. And then here's uh, this other one. His pen isn't working when asked to sign the Magna Carta. So in conclusion, 
Many years ago, people believed in divine right and that kings were given the power to rule from God, and this helped kings stay in control. Another way kings stayed in control was the feudal system, and that kept the lords having some power over most of the people. The Magna Carta, signed by King John in 1215, it's really, really important because it's the first time a king actually gave up some of their power. And that started sort of a, started the ball rolling a little bit, like a snowball down a mountain. As time went on, the kings and queens of England slowly lost more and more power until today they virtually have no power. The American Revolution, that is really what we're most concerned about because this is American history. So how does this fit in? The American Revolution, when we start to look at that a little closer, was another step in taking a, away power from the king. And the Magna Carta was the first step in this process of having the king lose their power.